the next presenter will be Dr. Cobreros. He is not a native tongue in English like I am, so he has practiced a lot the last weeks to give his presentation. So a warm welcome for Dr. Cobreros from Argentina. Uh, he will present um, uh, the module on leak point pressure in not neurogenic patients. The floor is yours. Right now? Yes. So, as Dr. Richer said, it's not my mother language, so I, I do my best. Uh, we have to, this is the ICIT teaching model for measurement of leak point pressure in patients without neurological abnormalities. I have to thank uh, my co authors, Monica Del Villar, uh, Matias Gonzalez, and Peter Rossier, who is present right now. Thank you very much for your help and for your support. So, first we have to say that uh, going to the international, we'll go first to the, the introduction, and we have to say that the International Continent Society defines the detrusion leak point pressure as the detrusion pressure uh, of, uh, of the lo lowest pressure, lo lowest pressure of the detrusion in which urine leakage occurs without a contraction, uh, without a contraction or without increasing the abdominal pressure. And we, the SCS defines the abdominal leak point pressure at the PBS and where a leak, uh, or very, uh, a leak occurs uh, in the presence of the increased abdominal pressure but without a detrusion contraction. You have to do as well that the leak pressure point should be qualified according to the site of the pressure measurement that would sh should be, they would be intravesical, vaginal, or rectal. And uh, we do have to account also that the method with, pre with uh, the pressure is generated. That could be cough or valsalva. And this is regarding the ICS 2002. We have know that leak point pressure may be calculated also in three ways from the three different uh, baseline values which are in common use with that it would be zero uh, which is the true zero of intravesical pressure which is PVS. The PVS measured at zero blood volume or the PVS immediately before the cough or the valsalva. What is important uh, and we are going to uh, support that the baseline use and the baseline pressure in every registration should be specified. So we do know that standardization of abdominal leak point pressure measurement has not been reported to date. So we are presenting this measurement of leak point pressure patients without neurological abnormalities as a, a new standardization for everyone involved in urodynamic studies uh, with an evidence base uh, this was going to be presented as this ICS PowerPoint pre presentation, as well as in a, a document that will be found on the website of the ICS. We go first a little more, a little of pathophysiology. I won't talk uh, very much about it, but uh, since Edward Maguire in 1993 report uh, the relevance of the uh, the true leap on pressure in patients with spinal dystrophy. Uh, he defines the uh, stress urine incontinence type 3, and he defined that uh, in 76% of the patients who have a valsalva leap on pressure, that it was less than 60 centimeters of water, uh, they, they uh, there always a, a leak. So uh, this defined uh, that then the valsalva lipid pressure began to use as a diagnostic and pronostic tool for urine incontinences. So two stress urine incontinences were, uh, were defined. One was the hypermobility of the urethra that can be treated with bladder, uh, with, uh, bladder neck support. And the other type uh, of stress urine incontinence was defined as the type three that was where the valsalva lip and pressure uh, was less than 60 centimeters of water. That during the, the studies have made had low success rates when they are when they are 
uh, treated with a bladder neck support. So, uh, and we know the, what happened then, the middle that trust support things coming up. And this was used until some reports found no correlation between the outcomes of the surgical procedures at the different degrees of valsalva lipoin pressure. But other reports use different methods to determine the valsalva lipoin pressure, so standardization is needed. We go to the steps in performing lipoin pressure, and this was video dynamics uh, up here. It says that uh, for a simple urodynamic or simple stress urine incontinence, uh, uh, multi-channel uh, urodynamics uh, are, are okay, and you use video dynamics only for complex video dynamics or stress urine incontinence that uh, don't work out before uh, uh, any procedure. But there is no evidence that video dynamics had to be used in a stress urine incontinence. Again, you, you had to put it uh, against the cost, the radiation exposure of the patient, and uh, we don't know. We don't know if it would be representative the position that the patient have due to in the video aerodynamic. The good dynamic practice recommends, and the ICI, uh, the ICI 2000 and 2013 confirms that thin, as thin as possible transurethral dual lumen catheter should be used for filling and vesical pressure measurement, as well as interrectal catheter to monitor intraabdominal pressure. Both pressure should be referring to atmospheric pressure with external sensors at the level of the pubic symphysis. So we go with preparation technique and interpretation. So uh, about regarding the position of the patient, the position of the patient during the standard systometry is according to the good dynamic practice and I see ICI 2014 confirms preferably seated in upright position. We do know that there is a lot of study that uh, there are conflicted uh, reports on this, but we conclude that it is not proven that patient position during the procedure has a significant role on clinical on cl or be clinically relevant effect on the valsalva lipid pressure with a level of, it, uh, or of evidence 3B. The catheter size and anatomical position. There have been several monocords, monocentral cord studies have shown that smaller transurethral catheters cause less obstruction during voiding or leakage, but the optimal, but the optimal diameter is not yet determined. So a bladder volume and leak point pressure determination. Uh, Maguire says use that uh, that. Uh, valsalva lipid pressure should be um, should be sick when w when we have a 20 percent of the bladder capacity of the patient. But this uh, said that you have to f to fill to have a, a a complete systometry first to go to another complete systometry to look for it to to the way, to a 20 percent of the maximum bladder capacity. So. Uh, n as regarding all that, we do have, we do know that as the blood in the same patient, if the lipid pressure began to decrease uh, as the blood volume increases, and in other studies says that the, that there is no correlation between the blood volume and the lipid pressure. So we have no evidence and no blood volume is superior to consider valsalva lipid pressure in all patients. In regard to the generated pressure, if the patient has no possibility to do valsalva, which is the best procedure, cough lipid pressure may be possible. We do have to accept that with cough lipid pressure, uh, valsalva, uh, the, to choose the, the point where the leakage uh, occurs, it would be more difficult, and valsalva maneuver is more acceptable for, for, uh, for seeking the lipid pressure. What is a major point is that the predictive value of the valsalva lipid pressure. So uh, it shows weekly or no correlation with the outcomes of surgical procedure, and this has to be this is uh, present in several studies with no so bad level of evidence, two or three. But 
we do have to admit that in those studies, the the way that the Balsava lipoprotein pressure was finally uh, described is not the same. So large prospective gold observations can show us the really value of the Balsava lipoprotein pressures uh, and to know the sensitivity and specificity to better predict outcome on management in patients with stress urine incontinence. We do have some recommendations for practice. Recommend that investigators interpret the results of the dynamic procedures as having on all cases an artifact due to the catheter uh, itself, independently of the size of it. In um, previous studies, as the postvoidal residuum, the urinary uh, charge volume, the free uroflow, mass should be taken uh, into account and the most representative parameters of reality. On the basis of urodynamic practice, a single double lumen catheter, five to eight French should be used for cytometry, and we recommend that it should be used to, to seek for the lipo pressure also. In case of the position, we said before that, a, that the position of the patient should be seated in a upright position, but uh, in case uh, you use another position for this patient, you have to uh, declare that you have to, uh, they have to be pointed out in the, in the urinary study, if it's sitting, standing, or in the lithotomy position. Uh, it should be reported. We recommend that the testing position correlates also with the usual activity of the patient when urine incontinence is perceived. Although we know that we don't know the volume or in which we have to take it on court to, to, to measure the Valsava lipon pressure, we recommend that Valsava lipon pressure should be asked every 100 millimeters during the filling phase as a standard protocol. And we also recommend that the Valsava lipon pressure during the smaller blood of volume in which a patient is incontinence should be reported. So valsava lipoprotein pressure has been used to determine for patients for a surgical practice or not for a long time, and there are, no, there are several studies showing there is a weak correlation between the valsava lipoprotein pressure and the outcomes of the different surgical procedures for stress urine incontinence. So, so far, we have to say that the valsava lipoprotein pressure should not be used uh, to decide a surgical procedure or not. So we go to the conclusions. We recommend that the leap and pressure should be considered as one, but not the only one, of the dynamic evaluations to make therapeutic decisions. The evidence against the leap and pressure as a clinical factor to be taken into account for surgical treatment usually takes the leap and pressure as the unique parameter to be considered, and we acknowledge the complexity or the pathophysiology of stress urinary incontinence, moreover, in the presence of a prolapse. We, re we recommend that the Valsava lipoprotein pressure as another important tool for making diagnosis and prognosis while using the same standard or procedure. Cut-up value, sensitivity, and specificity of the metal could more easily be assessed. Thank you very much for your patience. Thank you, you did. Okay, there I am. You did a wonderful job, thank you. Um, any questions or remarks from you? Comments, Dr. Finazzo, I go. Yeah, use the microphone, please. You will remember it for the next ten years. Be in the in the database. Okay. Um, I just wanted to um, ask you uh, if you have considered. Uh, I've not. I've seen that uh, you have considered that. Uh, BLPP is not able to predict the success of surgery. Yes. Uh, anyway, there is, uh, I mean, a sparse evidence uh, that, for instance, uh, um, uh, a low BLPP may be a more associated to one success with some kind of uh, technical uh, types of surgery. For instance, yeah. uh, transobturator, uh, subureter string versus uh, uh, the, the uh, yeah. retropubic TVT. So, uh, have you uh, described this in the text? Uh, have you considered this aspect? Yes. 
it is in the document. Yeah, the studies has shown us uh, are seated in the document. Uh, but uh, we do have to acknowledge and we have to say that uh, all the all all the studies that you are saying that they are correct, that they are showing that leak point pressure it goes better with that surgical procedure or not, uh, have not been uh, performed in the same way. Yeah. So sensitivity and specificity of the metal itself, it cannot be it cannot be acquired. So this is in the document, but uh, the, you say that the evidence is not uh, strong for, no, for it's not so strong. to take conclusion. Yeah. Basically, there are two levels. The one is, uh, if you do leak point pressure uh, in your practice, you should do it one way or another as standard as possible and as perfect as possible. And the other question is, of course, what's the predictive value of any result towards any, any therapy? And the modules are not clinical practice guidelines. So we cannot decide in such model what you should do on the basis of that and or this uh, result. We can only get into the module how to do it from now on in the ICS manner. And that's what the module says. Of course, there are some words about clinical prediction and, and we all, I think, nobody disagree, but you can raise your hand that the predictive value of any leak point done by cough or alpha is very low at the moment. We have a treatment that seems to fit all with a certain success percentage. I think it's around two-thirds of our patients are happy with, with the standard treatment now. But leak point is of not very much importance. Who does leak points? Who of you? So you are doing your dynamics before our patients uh, having stress urinary incontinence and then you are doing the leak points. So you all raise hands. So that's the conclusion. Does it help this module doing your leak points? Does it confirm what you are doing already or not? There's one comment. Your comment. Uh, no, no, not really. Partially related to this one, but I agree with that. Yeah, you, my answer Okay, that. good. I agree. Yeah. You have yeah, a comment. Okay. Oh, you right. can go on. Okay. Um, um, just, just from where you left. Um, today, in female stress urinary incontinence, actually we are doing VLPPs just for academical purposes, but this does not change uh, our treatment strategy. Uh, all of the uh, index patients uh, are undergoing uh, mitral sling uh, surgeries, and uh, urethral hypermobility or urethral mobility is the real factor that we uh, analyze. Um, did you think to combine the LPP with, with urethral uh, hypermobility uh, to find maybe a better prognostic factor for surgical outcome? Because we know that urethral hypermobility and VLPP, these are two different, completely different actually, uh, phenomena. But in um, patients with uh, low VLPPs, the incidence of uh, urethral uh, immobility is higher. When you go up, it goes low. But uh, the, once when we were doing other type of surgeries, VLPP was more important, but today's in the era of mitral slings, it, does, it, is, it doesn't seem to be so important, but I'm not very much convinced with that. So maybe we can just, uh, in your module, you can um, just look the relationship of VLPP uh, with urethral uh, mobility, uh, and maybe we can uh, help, we can understand better the, the pathophysiology and also the role of these in, uh, as, as prognostic factors in surgical outcome. We will leave this, uh, I will leave this as a command, and this requires a new study, I think, and I'm sure this should be sorted out. For the time being, uh, this, this is not yet to put into a teaching module of standard practice. So I thank you for everything. You. For the sake of time, we will continue with the next presentation. Okay, thank you very much.
Okay, thank you. Yeah, it's okay.